there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel and welcome to, actually it's not a hop today, it's just for fun. Um, this is a challenge over at CSI Scrapbook Challenge and they have a Facebook group. I will link that down below. You can see there, there's a whole list of things under the evidence area. They are suggestions of things to use on your layout. There are five color choices there or color options. You can use all of those if you can or some of them. And then there are some uh, journaling suggestions as well. And so this particular challenge um, has been open. I, I don't actually know if it opened at the beginning of February or um, mid-February, but it is open till March 4th. So you can play along if you are interested in doing that. And I will, again, link their Facebook group down below so that you can go over and check out the challenge. Um, don't be uh, scared off or intimidated by the areas that say evidence and testimony because that is basically just um, the testimony is your journaling area um, or journaling suggestions and the evidence are suggestions of things to use. Um, and those suggestions are taken from the uh, photograph that is the inspiration of those ladies there that you see. Um, the color options there. They all, she also gives you the RGB codes for that if you're doing digital, but um, it's spring green, light denim, sunny yellow, purple, and black. And that pa paper that is in a circle there actually has a really fine stripe on it that is very small um, and it is actually light denim. So that is my light dem denim. I could not figure out which paper I wanted to pair it with. I thought that green looked really nice. Um, I liked the blue with the florals on it, but then it brought in that that like navy blue, which wasn't in the inspiration. And so at the end of the day, I went with this purple, which is not quite as true to the purple that is in the uh, inspiration piece, but um, it was the best that I had on hand. Um, I didn't have anything that was a really true dark purple. So I'm kind of making it a little darker by inking up those edges with some villainous potion I believe is what that is um, oxide ink and then I am using some blue jeans oxide ink to uh, blue up this uh, semicircle. So some of the items that are listed under the evidence area were checkered pattern which is taken directly from the clothing that the ladies are wearing in that photo, darts, darts, dots, <laughs> hearts, <laughs> flowers, leaves, sewing, craft themes, craft themed elements, um, jewels and pearls, uh, people icons, a globe, thread, trim, bows, ribbon, fabric, eyeglasses, butterflies, tassels, pom-poms, enamel dots, beads, and uh, patchwork design, stitching, buttons, and pockets. So I went with the stitching and uh, um, I just used that black, a black uh, thread. And so I could cross stitching and thread off of my list. I don't know if that really counts because as two things because um, it is stitching and it was done with thread. Um, I suppose if I used the thread maybe as like a little nest to underneath an embellishment or something like that, maybe it would count. So I'm not really sure how, you, how that gets counted. But um, I used thread and I did some stitching. So And now I am using some leaves. And uh, I know you're pr I'm probably going to get asked where these dyes are from. I don't have that information with me. Um, I'm going to try and find out. My guess is that they are probably either Kaiser Craft or Tonic Studios, um, but I could not swear to it. I've had these in my stash for quite a while, um, long before I ever kind of kept track of that kind of information. But any vine, viney leaf type dye would work for this. And there are tons of them out there from several different companies. So I am just using what I have on hand. Um, actually, any leaves would work. You could uh, create your own type of vine if that was something you were interested in doing. Aha, there's my stitching. So I am showing you that I went ahead and did that stitching. And I am going to pull the um, thread from the beginning of the stitching and the end of the stitching back through the back of my paper by pulling on the bobbin thread and it'll pull the black right through and then I just tape it down with a little bit of uh, washi tape so that it doesn't come unraveled. Now I'm just using some Distress Oxide ink in peeled paint for these uh, green viney looking things and then for these uh, ones that look more 
a little bit more like a fern, I'm using Bundled Sage Distress Oxide Ink. I will also list those down below for you, um, but I went ahead and put them on the screen there so that I wouldn't forget when I'm voicing this. Um, I'm not always that... Uh, not always that thoughtful about it when I am working on editing my video. Um, sometimes I don't have the stuff available, but in this particular case I did. So there you go. Um, so flowers were another thing that were on this list. So I'm using my Stampin' Up! punch that has these three little tiny flowers and I'm going to punch those out of yellow. Uh, you saw that I had some yellow paper at the beginning that had yellow flowers, but they were too big for my liking and I didn't want the yellow to be too overpowering. I wanted to stay kind of with the blues um, because Noah has a blue shirt on and so does his auntie. And I didn't want to go with, um, you know, I don't mind the purple. It's pretty, it's kind of a muted purple, but there's a lot of green in the photos, especially the photo that they're walking away from, um, walking across that bridge in. There's a lot of greenery. It's kind of hard to see on the photo right there, but I really liked the way that it looked with this particular um, color of leaves. And it was perfect because sp spring green was definitely in the list. Now I did take some liberties and added a couple other different colors of green, um, just because leaves are not always the same shade of green, right? In, in nature, they are not always a flat green color and they are not always the same color color of green so um, and in fact the ladies in the picture don't have all the same color of green on there's quite a bit of shading on there so I thought it would work well so I kind of went a little bit outside the box on that one and again I'm adding um, some more lime green looking sprigs there but they're very small so it's just bringing in a pop of that brightness um, the green that I have in my hand right now that I'm putting glue on that is actually from SEI and it is a fabric um, it was a little harder to cut through my um, my sidekick there, but it did cut, and it does have kind of a shimmery um, quality to it. So uh, one of the things in the list of things to use was fabric, and so I'm counting that as fabric. It's kind of a weird fabric, but it does it is fabric. So um, I am counting that as fabric, and. Uh, I'm liking how this is coming together. I didn't want to go all the way around that semicircle because I didn't want to, first of all, cover up all of the stitching. And I um, wanted to kind of go diagonally from the top towards the top right to the bottom left. And I didn't want everything to look super perfect, so I'm having a few little sprigs stick out. And I'm liking the way that it's looking. I want it to kind of have a natural feel to it rather than super planned. Now there are a lot of layers there and um, I'm okay with the way that it looks. Um, at the end of the day when you get all of the little yellow flowers on it looks fine. It does kind of look like it's a little bit of a hot mess of a pile there but it, it won't look, I promise it won't look bad at the end. <laughs> so um, and then I'm just trying to tuck in these little bright green pieces. I don't want them all matchy matchy. I want them to kind of like stick out here and there kind of just like in nature, it's um, it's not perfect. So I'm liking the way that's looking. And then I just flip the entire thing upside down so that I can um, <coughs> work on that top part without having my head in the way of the camera. And I'm just using my Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive um, to adhere everything down. It is my favorite glue by far. Um, it holds really well and it dries relatively quickly. So it makes me pretty happy and I use it for quite a lot of things these days. You just saw me rip one of those um, pieces because it was a little bit too long and hanging uh, a little bit down too far. And so I just tucked the extra piece in. Um, I cut the little ripped edge off so it didn't look like it was ripped and just tucked it in and uh, gave a little bit more foliage to what will eventually be the right hand side. Um, it's the left hand side as you look at it currently. <laughs> um, so other things that I think I'm going to put on there, I think I'm going to put some butterflies. I toyed with the idea of tassels, but then I realized I actually don't have any tassels. I think I've gotten rid of all the tassels that were in my stash by I, either using them up or um, if they were really big, I just got rid of them because um, they're not my favorite thing to work with. And so I don't really, I, I don't really keep them around if they're not something that I'm going to think I'm going to use. Um, I did toy with the idea of pom-poms. I had some trim 
that looked like it had little tiny pom-poms on it, but I didn't like the way that looked either. Um, and I didn't, I don't even think I left that in the video for you to see. Uh, it was just too bulky. And so I, I just didn't do it. <laughs> um, I do end up using some, um, jewels and you're going to see that, uh, when I get those flowers made. So, um, I am ending, I end up with flowers, um, flowers and leaves are one item, jewels, uh, fabric, um, stitching. If you count the thread, I don't know, five, five or six things off of this list, maybe. Um, and, uh, you're, you can pick whatever, however many you want. You don't have to pick any if you don't want to. Obviously, it's your choice. But um, when this uh, challenge was originally back when I was on the design team years and years ago, um, you were supposed to use at least three of the things. So in my mind, I still like to choose at least three things. So I definitely made that work. Um, for the testimony or the journaling, uh, it says document a group or a friendship. And that's what I'm going to do as I'm going to talk about, um, Noah and his auntie's relationship, or actually my daughter may end up writing that because she does a lot of the journaling. And so, um, I tucked in that card behind the photos and that was a die that I used from Elizabeth craft designs. I'll put the link to that down below as well. And, um, that was another thing that was actually on the list was a pocket. So I do have a pocket in there for that little card to nestle under the photos. And so um, another thing that I could check off the list. And so then the other ideas were to handwrite directly on your layout or write the top four most important things about your topic. And then there's some inspiration words, spunky, old, and broads. I'm not going to use those. Um, and then there is a hyperlink to a Friday for fill in, which will give you several more options of things to look for or to choose. And I did not end up um, even looking at that because obviously the topic of um, writing about a relationship, it was the number one thing on my list to, that I wanted to capture in this layout. Now, um, Sorry, I thought I was going to sneeze. Um, you can definitely go over to the CSI Facebook group and check this out. There is actually another uh, challenge going on. There's two challenges every month. And so if you're not interested... Sorry, I went off uh, the mic there because I sneezed. Um, if you're not interested in this particular challenge, maybe the colors aren't up your alley and it's, or it's not something that you're interested in doing, go check out the other one because... Uh, the other one is uh, more Valentine's focused, maybe. I, I, it's not really Valentine's. It'll have other options as well, but it definitely focuses more on the reds and pinks. Um, but these are really fun challenges to work with, especially if you like recipe challenges, because it gives you a lot of options and you don't have to use every single thing that's on the recipe, but you do have a lot of options. So that yellow paper that I used for the all of those flowers. I used the mustard seed distress ink to kind of ink up the edges. The two largest ones were fussy cut out of a Paige Evans uh, paper. And that was not her current collection. It was maybe two collections ago. Um, and I just used one in each area and then I just nestled all of those flowers around. And then I'm using these really tiny Tim Holtz dies to do my title. Yes, the title is going to be that small and the date. And I originally, I thought I would put the title on that little yellow strip. The title is just going to say Noah and Auntie. And um, it did not, it was very apparent that it did not fit on that strip. So I'm just putting the date, which is 7 They went down to visit my cousin's daughter, who is also my daughter's best friend, and uh, went to the zoo and spent the weekend together. So that I just definitely wanted to document that um, they did this trip and these are some of the fun times they had with her. And so that little yellow strip of paper, I'm going to actually use my tiny attacher and I'm just going to stick it onto that piece that slides out. And I just liked that idea because the tiny attacher adds a little bit more um, texture to the layout. 
and it brings in the silver and just a little bit different kind of a way of looking at it rather than just writing it on the tab. It also brings the yellow to the right hand side of the photos, which I liked. It brings the purple over there too because the letters are done out of the purple paper and I'm really happy with the way that it looks. Now I just stick a little bit of glue on the back of my hand to dip my letters in rather than trying to put glue directly on those tiny letters. That would be very difficult to do and be very messy. So by doing it this way, I can kind of dip it in there and control how much glue I get on the back of those letters. Um, and it's right there, super handy. Um, so that you can just easily, you know, your hand's going with you no matter what. You don't have to go find where you put the glue on your desk and you're not accidentally dipping your hand in the glue when it's sitting on your desk. So then I pulled out this paper. It's off to the right hand side there. It's got the stripes on it. Um, but I'm using the lighter color, which is a lot like the light denim color that is in the striped paper. And um, I know it kind of it kind of has a kind of weird indigo vibe when it's all together. But when it's not next to the darker stripe, it looks more blue. And so I just die cut some butterflies out of that. And I'm inking up the edges of them with more of that faded jeans distress ink. And you did see me also go around the journaling card with um, my purple ink. So that gave a little bit more purple to that area. And then I'm going to put three little butterflies in each one of these areas. Now the funny thing is I didn't think about it until after the fact, but I do actually have pictures of them at the butterfly house. But I didn't think to do that. So these are the pictures that I'm using. Um, I did pop those little wings up onto some foam. I did not make you sit through that because it was kind of an arduous process because they are so tiny. But um, that is my completed uh, layout. I hope that you enjoy it. I will be back again uh, later this week with another video. And then we are going to start ramping things up for the end of the month. And I'm shooting for 30 days of videos in March. So stick around. I will be back. Um, I've been kind of slow going at the beginning of the year, but I am ramping up. So I'll see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.